What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist, and today we're back to another video of that universe that we all know and love, Warhammer 40k. We enjoy the grim darkness, we enjoy the never-ending war, and today we will be enjoying the weaponry and armor of a warpsmith. So warpsmiths are essentially the chaos versions of the, what are they called, techno space marines? I don't know. <laughs> I forget the Imperium, what they call their version of the Warpsmith. Uh, tech Marines, I think. Yeah, Techno Marines. Yeah, there's there's no Disco or Techno in 40k that we know of. Unless you're talking about the Marines of Pretty. But anyway, that's another topic. I'm going off topic. Today we're talking about the weapons and war gear of the Warpsmith. If you guys are more interested in looking at a overall encompassing lore on the mecha tendrites of the admech go ahead and check out that video that gersh one posted yesterday but today we're gonna dive into this chaotic lore now the reason why i'm talking about the warpsmith is because recently i did a 40 facts video going over the abilities of the new shadow sphere box set for that malefic discipline and it kind of focuses more on demon engines and summoning demons and with your brand spanking new lord discordant coming out uh chaos is kind of leaning more towards using demonic engines and the warpsmith is a perfect addition to your lists because he gets to heal these demon engines or he gets to do mortal wounds against vehicles so i thought let's cover this bad boy and see what he has to offer so let's begin with the Flash Metal Exoskeleton. So usually all Warpsmiths have some type of modification to their bodies, and that usually involves working with metal or some type of protection, and the Flash Metal is that kind of thing. This Exoskeleton is kind of used more so within the Legion of the Iron Warriors. This is when the warrior literally embodies the quote, iron within, iron without. For his body has long ago been clad in this flesh metal exoskeleton, and it has now permanently bonded with his war gear and anatomy, making him kind of a cyborg in a sense. In battle, if a blade manages to penetrate his armor, it will blunt itself on the hardened flesh beneath and the return blow will not be long in incoming. Even those enemies that somehow deal the warrior significant damage will see their adversaries' cabled muscles re-knit themselves in a frenzy of silvered fibers until they are rebuilt as strong as ever. Think of this as the precursor to the Primaris Marines. The Primaris Marines' muscles have been kind of replaced with steel, or they've been beefed up to the point of they're not just regular muscles, they're, they're, they're steel muscles, if that makes sense. So you could say that the Warpsmith did it first. On top of this, this almost works kind of similar to how a Necron's Necrodermis is, although the cables and the flesh metal exoskeleton itself isn't sentient by what I know of, um, it does kind of rebuild itself to wherever there is damage. Like they said here, if a blade stabs a, a warpsmith, that gaping wound will heal itself, and it'll be like nothing really happened. And that's actually implemented into the game. If you play Warhammer 40k 8th edition, every turn the warpsmith can heal one wound automatically. And it's not just the warpsmith that can do it, but any other demon engine can do it as well. The next weapon that we're going to be talking about is the Mecha Tendril. Now these things vary in size and in look, but when you look at a Warpsmith, you can see the Mecha Tendrils. They stand out right away. Basically, if you know about Spider-Man and Doc Oct, it's those robotic arms, robotic limbs that they use for pretty much anything. Um, they could be used as a form of ballistics, they could have like guns at the end of their mecha tendrite, they can have swords, even like depending on what type of environment you're in, say you're trying to explore like an STC or something like that, you can change out the mecha tendrite to be like an exploration type with like an auspex spanner 
a lamp, a compass, whatever you need really, you can use it. Um, I know the forces of the Adeptus Mechanicus, they use various types of these servo arms. Um, they have like servo harnesses if you're a tech marine, and if you're even into the whole um, apothecary side, and for some reason you have a mechadendrite, you can have one with the, um, what do they call them, the, the gene seed remover tool on it. It, 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 whatever really you can think of, it can be done. Um, so that's, that's a really cool alternative to converting your, your warp smiths, your servo skulls. You can add them, get a skull with freaking mecha tendrites. Literally, you could add them on anything and it'll look badass. And just the converter side of me just has a whole bunch of ideas. But the practical me can't really implement them. <laughs> I'm not good when it comes to like modeling and such, but the ideas are there. It's just getting them on the actual models a little bit harder. But anyway, let's actually get into what a mecha dendrite is. So it's basically used as a form of bionic tentacle or a robotic arm, or it could even be a prosthetic limb that is used throughout the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Tech Marines of the Adeptus Astartes, the Warp Smiths, and basically a whole bunch of Dark Mechanicus people have these guys on them. They're constructed from various metallic alloys, they have innumerable motors and actuators, and overall, it basically, depending on what function it has, it'll vary depending on what it needs to have. So if you're trying to drill through rock, obviously you're going to have powerful motors to make that drill spin faster and faster. If you're trying to do delicate jobs, such as an apothecary, obviously it'll have more, more kind of slight... Uh, modifications to it. But anyway, these are very, very powerful when it comes to combat. They can be used as a form of more appendages. You can have eight arms, you can have four arms, you can just have one tendril. It all depends on what the need be for your warpsmith or marine. Usually, you can see a variety of weapons for these warpsmiths. They can have a bolter placed upon it, maybe even a melta gun or a flamer. And yes, even power weapons can be seen being wielded by these tendrils. And again, guys, if you want a more in depth uh, video on these, check out the video that Gersh1 did yesterday. If I remember, I'll try to leave it at the end of this video as a link, but if not, you can check it out later. Anyway, let's keep on moving to the rest of their weapons in war gear. The rest of the weaponry that can be seen upon a warpsmith's um, equipment isn't really that flashy, it's kind of standard. You have your frag and crack grenades for whenever the situation arises. You have the mighty power axe for when you need that little bit more of oomph. Um, a power axe is just what it sounds. It is a power weapon that takes the form of either a single or double-edged battle axe. They vary in length, they vary in design, but overall these weapons are strong enough to cleave through adamantium. Usually if a warpsmith is in battle and he swings this powerful weapon, most of the time he's going to cut his enemy clean in two. For the power of the flesh metal exoskeleton, and even the mechotendrite can greatly increase the strength of the warpsmith, and usually it's enough to cut a person cleanly in half, depending on who they're fighting. But that's another reason why they carry the power axe. And finally, the last most common piece of equipment seen on the warpsmith is the bolt pistol. Um, it's just usually used as a last ditch weapon, it's a sidearm, it's not really that powerful, but it is shooting bolts, so it's not something to kind of, you know, uh, forget about. But most of the time, the powerful weapons are seen implemented into the mechotendrites, as I said before, they've got bolters, flamers, and even melted guns. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have for the weapons and war gear of the warp smiths. These guys are really badass. Um, my Chaos Army is going to be implementing at least two of these guys. I've already got one, I haven't built it yet, uh, but I am looking to bring another into the army, since I am going to focus a lot on demon engines for my army. Because for a while I was kind of teetering on what um, Chaos God I should kind of focus on, and I ended up doing 
usually an HQ and a swarm of demons for each army, or for each chaos god. So I've got like a greater demon of Slanesh and some uh, demonets. I got a Terminator in. It's all about Nurgle. Terminator Lord, that's Nurgle, and I've got some Plague Bearers, um, Zeech, and I still need to get some stuff, and uh, obviously for Corn, I've got the Demon Prince with Wings, and I've got some Blood Letters. Now those are just lore-wise for my army, those are the generals of my army, they're called the Bloody Eclipses, and um, the main meat of my army, so to speak. We'll be focusing on Demon Engines. I have a character that I've been using as a Forge World kind of Warpsmith model, but beefed up. I'll be talking about that guy tomorrow because he's really cool, um, both model-wise and in-game-wise. Um, so, stay subscribed for that. But I do want to focus on the brand spanking new Lord Discordant that's coming out. Um, and I've got like Helldrakes, Forge Fiends, Mahler Fiends, so I'm going to be focusing a lot on the Demon Engine aspect for Chaos. If you guys play Demon Engines in your Chaos lists, let me know what combos work. Should I bring Obliterators, um, the ones from Shadow Spear? Is the Master of Possession something that I should really be like focusing on? If not, just let me know what combos are pretty cool, and um, yeah, that's all I got for today. As always, guys, stay subscribed, hit up that Facebook page, uh, hit up the Twitter account, because we do post on there, and um, yeah, that's all I've got for today. This has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll be seeing you guys next time.